Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Manette Riard, and this is Painting in Your PJs, live with Manette. And I am back today with another poem by Emily Dickinson called I'm Nobody. This is a great poem. It wasn't the one I thought we were going to talk about today, but this is the direction that I want to go. Welcome to Painting in Your PJs. If you haven't been here before, this is a live stream about creating in community. Grab a cup of coffee. I'm still in my pajamas. It's 7 a.m. Mountain Time. I live in Loveland, Colorado, and I am all about using creativity as a process for self-discovery. And poetry in particular is a powerful visual way to sort of flow deeper within ourselves and to open up new conversations inside of ourselves. And Emily Dickinson is such a great poet to be on that journey with. We look at looked at her beautiful poem yesterday, Hope is the Thing with Feathers. We're going to look at, at another one of her most well-known uh, poems today as well. So super excited to, to be here diving into all of this with you today. I'm going to take the last sip of my coffee and then I'm going to dive in and get started. So grab your art journal, grab a pencil. We're going to be drawing a frog today and um, some acrylic paints. It's kind of a fun page. So maybe I'll be starting over here on this page. Not really sure. We'll see where we get to, um, but I'm excited about where we're going today. I think, I don't really know. I never really know where I'm going until I actually sit down and get there. So um, it's going to be fun. Good morning. If you're joining me live, please pop in and say hello. Love to see you all here. <clears throat> and the poem that we're talking about today is called I'm Nobody. Who are you? And I love this poem. It's super short. Buena dias. Good morning, Julie. And we actually have uh, in this printout a really nice picture of Emily Dickinson sitting at her desk. And the thing, one of the many things that I find fascinating about her was she was such a prolific poet. And she often enclosed poems to, to uh, send like stuck poems in letters to friends. She was also an avid letter writer. And she was never publicly recognized during her lifetime, but she didn't want to be. She wasn't seeking fame, right? And she lived from 1830 to 1886, and the first volume of her work wasn't published until 1890. So the poem is I'm Nobody, Who Are You? by Emily Dickinson. I'm nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell. They'd advertise, you know. How dreary to be somebody. How public, like a frog. To tell one's name the live long June to an admiring bog. And this is a playful poem, but it has a lot of meaning and significance as well about this idea of being recognized. It also brings me back to fond memories of ponds and waterways, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, where you can go and hear the frogs calling. And there, it's a cacophony. There's one part of our morning walk that last spring in the... May, June, where the frogs were so loud every time we walked by. So I love this image of the frog who's singing his name out loud, the live long June to an admiring bog. But there's also this deeper theme here. Marion, good morning. There's this deeper theme in this poem of not wanting to be known, being happy with being a nobody. And it made me think about our relationship with our art and why we make art and do we want to share our art? Are we making art just for us? And there's no right or wrong answer here. And some people would argue that it's not art until it is shared. And there's something that's both intimidating and inspiring 
about sharing our art, but the more we share it, the more it builds our confidence. If you go back a decade on my Facebook page and look at what I was sharing a decade ago, you can see the evolution of my own creative practice across time. And so it's an interesting thing to think about this idea of do I share or do I not? It's intimidating to share. It opens us up to criticism, whether that's constructive or well-intentioned or just mean like when we were kids. And so I, I think a lot about this, about, you know, why do I share my work and how does it support me to share my work? Obviously for me, some of it's 100% business related, but a lot of it's just really personal. Right here, what I'm doing every morning, this is my personal practice. And I think that there's something about showing and sharing it that helps me get more comfortable with my own vulnerability and being willing to share. So we're gonna draw this cute little frog this morning because I love all of her poems are so, so visual. But I'm curious about you know your own comfort with sharing your art. And I think there's, and my son and I had a fascinating conversation about this. Let me get some paint started or I'm gonna sit here and chat the hour away about, uh, we were talking about our color-coded emotions workshop, and I'm looking for a blank page. Oh, that one's kind of fun. Maybe we'll just stick our little froggy on here. And uh, we were talking about our color-coded emotions workshop, and maybe the next time we do it, we might add a, a Facebook group. Because, you know, we find that a lot of our people in our community, not everyone, does love to share their work. So I'm gonna get some gesso down on this page, although I kinda of like this little figure in here, so I might keep that figure and paint the paint the rest out. Um, and he's like, I don't make art to share, you don't make art to share. And I'm like, well, that's partially true, but I have art that's just for me, that's part of my personal practice that never gets shared anywhere and that's okay too and art that I'm comfortable sharing and I think the more that we are willing to share and be seen the less like a nobody we feel although the intention of this particular poem is she's an intentional nobody right an intentional nobody good morning Yvonne All right, this is a funny little brush. It's very uh, streaky. It's kind of short and stiff. Oh, that's cool. I'm drawing Emily looking in the mirror. I love that. I love that. And I love that you cursed too. I don't know if I've ever heard you curse before. Emily looking in the mirror. Hmm, say more about that, Marion. All right, that brush is not making me happy. Let's see what else we got here. Does look like Emily looking in the mirror. I'm nobody, who are you? Are you nobody too? That's another beautiful interpretation of the poem and perhaps of this image as well. And this is a an old ad from a, I used pages from a, an old from the 40s, Saturday Evening Post. So it was very wrinkly paper, but I'm noticing the color isn't permanent, that uh, you can't see it on here, but you could just barely see the pink is bleeding through from the image. So I'm getting this pink Cast to my gesso, which is just interesting. It's not good or bad, just noticing. And I love that sense. I'm nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us. So what if she is looking in the mirror, Marion, seeing herself? All right, let's get some scrappy bits of paper. Okay, while we're sitting right here. Don't want to get paint all over this page. 
Hmm. Great question. I love that question. Did Emily want to be a known or did she not want to subject herself to the opinions of others? Well, in Manette fashion, if we turn that question around and asked, did Marion or Manette or Julia really want to be unknown or not want to subject ourselves to the opinions of others? It's a theme that comes up a lot for me personally in my own work about how comfortable am I sharing and like what size is enough? Like is it good to share with one people or a few people or what happens if it's thousands of people? And I think I'm going to leave her and we're going to put our little froggy here in the corner and maybe this will just be a one-sided spread today. So I'm going to get this dry and I'm going to see if I can draw this frog. Yeah, not wanting to subject ourselves to others' opinions. I feel that way often about my art, my writing. And my family are my biggest uh, critics and always have the most feedback, right? And so, you know, I often might hesitate to show something to my husband before I happily share it on Facebook because there's also social media allows a bit of anonymity. <clears throat> At least we think it does. All right, so playing on Marion's concept, look how fascinating this is. As I dried that gesso and that ink came back, all of a sudden here, I would want to get rid of that cashier word, but with that reflection is back, like this subtlety of this reflection showing through in that image. This is what I love about art journaling and just being in play and exploration right? Just being in play and exploration, all of a sudden I'm back to this bit of a mirror image, but it's a very shadowy mirror, mirror image, which really goes with our theme here of um, I'm nobody. Are you nobody too, right? So there's a, a shadowy substance to that. And I have to say in a decade of sharing my, pull this down just a little bit, that in just a little bit closer. In a decade of sharing my art and my work online, I've never had any negative feedback. Like the 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 biggest response that I get that I could consider negative would simply be um, silence, crickets, people not saying anything, right? So I'm kind of deciding if I want to maybe even pull this image back a little bit and you know silence is a is a form of criticism in and of itself so what happens if we just sort of bring her back a little bit i could mostly see the lines And then we get that shadowy sense there. So again, this is, you know, another one of those, like just letting the magic appear, trusting that, that process. And then I think that I'm nobody needs to go right here and be called out. So again, sometimes these things come together really magically, but I still want that little froggy here. And then I think maybe the poem is going to go 
over here. So Marion, thank you. Um, I love that they're sort of almost reaching out towards each other. Actually, maybe this needs to be a book in here. So her hand is kind of hidden because she's reaching into a box or something, but maybe I'm feeling like there wants to be something here. And again, this could all be done with collage. So maybe there's a sharing of a book here. Hmm. It always amazes me where the journey that art takes me on, right? It's always just unexpected, right? Unexpected. And this is another one of those poems. She was, uh, like, I remember in English classes them telling us not to use so many <laughs> exclamation points, right? And so this is a, an example of a poem. Yes, it's probably what she had access to was scraps of paper, right? Like we would write on little bits of envelopes or uh, sticky notes today, but we were told at least I was told, I don't know about anyone else, not to use so many exclamation points in my writing. Even when I started discovering marketing, right? They're like, don't use exclamation points. And she uses exclamation points in these long hyphens to really articulate the story. I'm nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell. They'd advertise, you know. So it's an interesting, st <laughs> Marion, you're funny. Then there's a, you know, also that uh, interesting getting caught up in marketing and newspapers of the time, right? Don't tell they'd advertise, you know, how dreary to be somebody, how public like a frog to tell one's name the live long June to an admiring bog. And this is also a time as an unmarried woman, mid-1800s, what was life like for her? Was it accepted to be out in public and visible? I don't know, um, my history is not that great of what women's lives would have been like in the mid-1800s on the East Coast of the United States, but it would be curious to discover about the advertising and the how jury to be somebody, how public. So just all these fun thoughts to think about, right? Um, I think are really, really powerful. Okay, shift that focus back down there and let's get our little froggy in here. And I'm tempted to cheat and just cut this cute little frog out because he's about the right side, but he's actually not looking the right direction. So I'm gonna see if I can follow these instructions. Yeah, not even in liberal progressive Amherst. Yeah, it would have been frowned upon to be visible, to be somebody. All right. So I'm going to draw the frog going in the opposite direction, which will be a little bit of a challenge here, but we'll see where we can get to. And I don't know what it is about frogs. They're kind of like they're they're to me they're both creepy and fascinating all at the same time. Like I really don't love things that are slimy, but I do li love listening to the sound of the frog singing. One time we went on a hike in the spring in Santa Barbara, and we came across just a tiny little pond. There's not a lot of, of water there. And uh, this whole pond was just full of little frogs and tadpoles just singing their little hearts out. It was pretty amazing. Hmm. 
All right, getting those feet going. I will often just do a Google search for how to draw a frog easy to help me just get those lines and shapes down. I'm not looking for any kind of perfection here. I'm just looking to capture, right, the frog. She has kind of a big round eye. So there we have a frog-ish shape here. Get his little eyes closer together over there. All right, now let's come in and add some color. So we have a frog-ish. This is so true, Julie. Even today, there are ways it is acceptable for women to show up. And then there's certainly our own judgments about how we're supposed to show up and depending on generations we were raised in. That was part of my confident or my conversation with my son yesterday about, you know, how his friends show up for each other or show up in the world. It's very different, right? I mean, I grew up in the area era where you never went out. Well, my mother tried to get me to never go out without lipstick. It didn't really work. But um, you got dressed up to go to the mall, to the grocery store, right? You know, so, and I notice as I get older and see the younger generations, I start to feel my own judgments flow in as well. Okay, I'm thinking about color here. There's something about the moodiness of these earthy tones. And maybe I'm just going to come in with some Posca markers today and add a little bit of color. Let's get our some green on our froggy. And I love sort of the juxtaposition of this quirky little frog with these more formal ladies up here, which is also interesting in the context of the poem, this idea of I'm nobody, don't advertise, don't be like the frog. Right, Julie, that makes perfect sense. Here we do, we dim our light, dim our lights. And sometimes I think we dim it not out of what we think is acceptable, but just our own fear as well. How many of you grew up in an era where children were to be seen and not heard? Or a family that believed that? My family wasn't really like that, but definitely... I heard that a lot. All right, Mr. Froggy needs some little black and white outlines. Yeah, look at me. I'm out and about in my pajamas. I am on a live stream, right, for the world to see in my pajamas for sure. But yeah, it's amazing to, you know, go to the grocery store and see people coming in in their pajamas. I don't, don't go out in public in my pajamas. I did go feed the bird feeder, fill the bird feeder in my front yard in my pajamas the other day. It was snowing and those little birdies, they were just begging for food. But I don't even walk to the mailbox, which is a block away in my pajamas, you know? So, yep. All very interesting. I almost kind of like her kind of shadowy, so I'm wondering if I'm just going to outline her and not do much else. So we have our little frog here. Sitting in his bog. Again, it's an interesting juxtaposition of images here, right? With this quirky little frog, although now I'm, you know, again, like yesterday, we're looking at the colors and the pages. The, the color story is starting to match on these two pages, which is completely unintentional and interesting.
Poscas don't even like to write over each other. They definitely like a dry surface. I'm going to let Mr. Froggy, and I think I'm going to come in and add some outlines to her and then see, because I like this kind of sort of mirror -y. I'm nobody. So if I'm nobody and I'm not seen, I am sort of ghost-like, sort of shadowy. That was also a lot of the imagery in Emily Dickinson's poems. You know, this woman has her hair all pulled up, very neat and tidy. And how many people is enough, right? There's also a sense that maybe she's sharing a poem or a story with this one person who's listening or maybe even sharing it just with herself, right? And it's like, I think it's valuable to share our artwork, but it's also essential that we find safe places to share that, that we don't have to share it publicly. But one of my favorite books about art is Austin Kleon's Show Your Work, about why we need to, to show and share our work. I love his playful style. And tonight is my first studio session live. So for people that are on my email list, I'm going to once a month do, maybe sometimes twice a month, do a live Zoom call, sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the evening, because uh, I want to see people's faces. I love being here with all of you. This is not changing at all, but there was a sense of wanting to just connect with people live, so I'm going to be doing some beautiful botanical abstract line drawing. And so if you're not on my email list, I'm happy to, to get you added. I should have put that link in the description. I can do that afterwards. And um, encourage you to come and join me live on Zoom. I'm super excited for this one. Yay! I'm having me looking into the mirror with Emily looking back at me, how we both prefer mostly amenity in our art. I love that. Beautiful. And I love how that image just magically appeared. And I love, like I said, the difference in these images. But now that I'm looking at her, I'm like, I think she just needs some little pops of color here. And our little froggy needs a little definition. Oops, not quite dry. Put that with my dryer real quick. And I'm just uh, writing with just a, a plain old Sharpie pen. I do like this particular Sharpie. It is permanent. And once it's dry, it uh, will not smear. It's not quite as nice as the, the Microns, but it's a good affordable alternative, especially because I go through so many of them. All right. And our froggy needs a bit of a mouth here. And he would have some spots on him too, so he might get some spots. Yay, so glad your guys are coming. At least I know two people are coming. 
last count, there were over 150 people on my email list that had said they were interested, so that's fun. And I know not all of them will be able to come to this one. But that's that, you know, fun people want to come hang out with me, which makes me happy. I don't feel like nobody, but there are definitely times when I think about that theme and how big do I want to be like I would never want to be super famous like a movie star like that just feels daunting and intimidating but sometimes that feeling can hold me back right like I have a cousin who has become a very famous writer of young adult fiction and last time I saw him it's been like I haven't seen him in person since before the the pandemic he lives in Boston and he was walking across the Boston Commons and someone's you know calling out his name and it's some uh, young person who was a, a fan of his work calling him out by his first name and stopping him you know so he's getting more recognizable and you could sense that there was some pride in that, but maybe also some concern over uh, loss of anonymity. Like, not that many writers are um, recognizable, right? Like, you know, if I saw some of my famous writer, favorite writers, like Barbara Kingsolver is one of my all-time favorite writers, I would not recognize her if I saw her on a plane or walking down the street. I would probably recognize Elizabeth Gilbert if I saw her. All right, just pulling again, moving those colors around the same on the top and the bottom. And what do I want to do with my little figure here? I'm thinking I just want to darken up her coat, maybe have it be this same kind of rich brown so we do kind of get that mirroring effect or what color is this maybe this blue. so this is another one of my favorite pens is the permapake it also works great over the tops of other things it's a little bit different texture it's more markery, less painty than a paint marker, but it again is a permanent marker. You can see it's a little bit streaky on here. And there's again something about the dullness of the cover, colors and the brightness all around that sort of also mimics that, that theme of I'm nobody, I don't stand out. Images of Emily Dickinson most often show her wearing black. Georgia's over here beside me trying to sneak her way in and crawl over all of my art supplies. I had some friends over on the weekend, including Julie, and uh, yeah, the cats just feel like they have to be an absolute part of everything. It's interesting, her, she's looking very librarian-like in her Hard again. Say again, please. Say what again, please. Um, and what inspired me to choose the the frog? It was the imagery in the poem Blanca, where she says, "How dreary to be somebody! How public like a frog! To tell one's name, the living June, to an admiring bog." She looks like a lady librarian here, maybe sharing this book with someone. 
right? So there's just an interesting, I wouldn't say this is a, the prettiest page that I've ever created, but it to me is really expressing the poem, right? It's expressing the poem. And she was saying that the frog was somebody, right? The frog was somebody. Just going to outline that book a little bit more because the frog is, and maybe Mr. Frog needs some music notes like we had yesterday, and the frog in June is, you know, singing his heart out and announcing his presence to everyone, and she often uses that uh, imagery from nature to really reflect on how she feels and what's happening in the world, right? And so again, this is a feels like a, a seasonal poem, even though we don't know when her, necessarily when her poems were written, and they're just, they're all numbered. All right. Loving just the super simplicity of this. Let's get our poem here. And none of her poems were actually titled, right? They were all just written. And I don't know, Marion, maybe you know, if she numbered them herself or her sister numbered them posthumously. And we're going to have the poem here. I'm wondering if I want my own handwriting there instead. Hmm. Interesting how they evolve. Okay, so I'm going to come over here with my handy dandy little stencil that I love, and we'll get a little bit of this gesso going and see if we can find a makeup sponge. That more or less in the center of the page. And so this page was uh, from a bunch of jelly printing that I did. So there's, if you wonder ever what to do, if you love gel printing, you never know what to do with all of the pages. They're great for collage, but they're great for building into journals like this one as well. All right, I'll come back over those letters again. My froggy needs some spots, right? When I think of frogs, they often have little spots on them. And I hadn't noticed that there's quite a bit of green in this page. I wasn't paying attention, but it's interesting. And this page turned this sort of pinky color all by itself. So again, it feels like these pages match in an interesting and unintentional way. box around there. I almost want to put multiple exclamation points there. All right. Almost feel like I need a little something, even maybe just maybe another black line here. So it gives that, just putting that little bit of horizon line there, it looks like she's standing behind the table. The book is, you know, standing up on the table. 
So we have, again, that um, sense of sharing that's happening there. And again, just having fun with adding those little bits of marks that make things stand out. And I'm going to see what we got here. I have so many different black pens. All right. So let's get this poem in here. I think it's so important to put our own handwriting into our journals. I'm often lazy and, uh, you know, just clip things out and stick them in, but I think it's important to get our own hand into our books as well. I'm nobody, who are you? Then there's a pair of us, and maybe there's a call for, oops, can't spell today. A call for connection here that she's reaching out also for a like-minded spirit. And this is flowing over the edge of my box, and I'm just going to be okay with that for right now. I may go back and add another line of white behind it and paint it back again. And this to me is such an interesting line. Don't tell. They'd advertise. And that specific use of, use of the word advertise. exclamation points everywhere. And I'm not following the lines of the poem because I'm running out of space here. How public, like there's Shame in being public, right? Like that frog calling attention to itself. The red winged blackbirds are here in full force and uh, they are so noisy. They are definitely very public as they're nesting and finding their mates. I think I read also that she was agoraphobic, like she was afraid to go outside, so she spent her time inside. And yet the frog is speaking into the bog, right? And there's, you know, this sort of anonymity and breadth of a bog, right? That's also very interesting in the poem. So the more that we read, and work with and imagine and sit with a poem, we can see new things, new nuances, right? The things change and shift. It's going to bug me if I let that text hang over that edge there into the color. So I'm just going to fix that up. A little tiny bit of perfectionism in me rears its head occasionally. I always think that I'm mostly over that. My husband came home yesterday after a week away, and I was glad he was home. And we were talking about some work stuff. I have a new program I'm going to be launching soon and uh, 
I always really struggle with the naming of things and I was having a little mini meltdown over that just, you know, that feeling of being stuck and, you know, wanting to create something that was really going to work and resonate and it's just, again, that sense of when do we feel like nobody? Maybe it's not all of the time. Maybe it's just some of the time. All right, I think we did it. I did it. So this is my version. Not at all what I expected to be creating today, but just trusting what showed up here on the page always fascinates me. And I want her to have just a little bit of color. So Emily Dickinson's poem, I'm Nobody, Who Are You, is a great poem to help us look at our relationship with visibility, with fame, with notoriety, or just with simply loving to share our work or being scared to show our work with one other person even, right? Like they were surprised after she died and they found literally close to 2,000 poems, right, um, in her bedroom on all the little slips of paper. I'm liking these just a little more dramatic lines. But again, where I would go next with this poem is to do some journaling around, do I want to be nobody or somebody? What's my relationship with visibility? What's my relationship or my resistance to sharing my art out in the world? All questions to ponder as artists. It takes us back to this question of, well, why do I create art? I mean, I create art because Partially it's my work, but mostly I create art because I love it and it makes me happy. And so really <clears throat> understanding why you create art is important too. So I'm, what I'm not loving here, and I can come back over and just continue to rework those letters, is that line felt very harsh at the top, and I'm not wanting the maybe the harshness, <clears throat> excuse me, of that line. So I'm just trying to soften up this line here. And let that sort of sky just flow down into the page a little bit better so it looks just a little bit more integrated, right? It didn't feel integrated enough. I love painting with a makeup sponge. Maybe it's the too much pink that I'm not liking here. Um, it, I think it uh, creates a really lovely texture, a lot of transparency. So it's amazing what you can do just playing with a makeup sponge in your work. And I don't want to completely disappear that pink because I like the, the story that it tells of where it was in the, in the magazine. So again, just softening some of this up, moving it around a little bit differently. It feels better not to have that line be quite so harsh on there. You can still see it just a little bit, but it already feels better. And those letters are getting a little funky. And if you don't like your own handwriting, just 
practice, right? If we look at handwriting like drawing, it's a skill. I went to uh, private Catholic schools until I was a sophomore in high school, so I've always had good penmanship because I had to, but there's our spread on I'm nobody, who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us, don't tell, they'd advertise you know. How dreary to be somebody, how public like a frog. To tell one's name the live long June to an admiring bog. So thank you so much for joining me. I think we're going to switch directions. I've loved doing two Emily Dickinson poems, but I am feeling called to maybe do some Rumi because we haven't done any Rumi, and he's one of my absolute favorite poets. So I think we'll come in with one of Rumi's poems tomorrow. I don't know which one yet. And then a friend shared a poem in a Facebook group yesterday without sharing who the, the poet was. And so if I can find out who that poet is, we'll share that one for our last day. And then I will not be here next week. There will be no uh, live series next week. I will be in Asheville, North Carolina. So I will be taking off the last week of April. All right, my creative friends, interesting page. Love how this came along. Have a wonderful day. I'll see some of you later this afternoon. If you're not signed up for this evening and you want to be, you can just send me a message or even put a comment in the um, YouTube and I will follow up with how to subscribe to my newsletter and get on that list. Have an absolutely beautiful rest of your day, my creative friends, and thank you for joining me for I'm Nobody. Bye. So, see you all soon. Bye-bye.